Hey everybody, Jeff here. Hey, on a nice rainy afternoon, we got a great video here for you today. We're going to talk about those annoying times when you have to pull up these uh, carpet tack strips, and you're probably wondering, well, how do you do it, and, and you know, what's the best way to do it? What are the good methodologies? Um, well, first of all, what are these tack strips? This is what they tack the carpets down with. So we pulled up the carpets, and as you can see right down here, the, you'll see these carpet tack strips are all around the edge. And uh, they basically look like this. So, I'll give you a nice little close up shot here. It's just a piece of strip of wood with these nails in it. So, you see how they're nailed into the concrete. Now, this here is concrete floor. And so, the installers just nailed them right in there. And so, it's our job now to pull these back up. And I always try to get them up in one piece. The wrong thing to do is to take them up into several pieces and bust them up, um, you know, when you're taking them up. So we're going to show you the proper way to do it, and we're also going to show you the wrong way to do it. Okay, so these are the tools that I typically use. These are my, uh, my favorite tools. And really, the ones that I use 90% of the time are just these two here, just the hammer and my little demo bar here. And uh, uh, sometimes I'll use this one. Sometimes you need to get into smaller spaces. And I also have little teeny tiny versions of things like this, but I hardly ever use them. Once in a blue moon, I'll use a 5 and one 2 and I like this because the blade is real stiff. And, and a, you can get underneath stuff and pry stuff up if you have to. It's a worst case scenario. Uh, but what I want to show you is how this works with this pry bar here. So there's a right way and a wrong way to pull these up. The, the best way, as you can see, see how the nails are going to nail it into the concrete here? So where do you think would be the best spot to lift it from? Well, you would want to get this tool and stick it right under the nail there and then pry it up. That's, the, that's where you have the most mechanical leverage. That makes the most sense. So knowing that, where do you think would be the worst spot to try to pull this up with? Well, the worst spot would be in the middle because if you try to come in the middle and lift this thing up, you're going to break it. So I'm going to show you how I like to do it and everybody of course has their own methods but this works for us pretty good and it gives us a, a good um, speed and efficiency to work with, with when you're doing this kind of production volume. So I'm going to show you what I do is I always start like off in the corner here and I'm going to get the crowbar here you can see the nail is right there so you just want to tap it right under it and then lift it up. And you don't want to slam and make this whole thing break because I want to pull this whole guy up in one piece. So I'm going to hit the other side. And there he is. Now what happens when you're left with a nail behind? Well, the, you can either get it with this side of it and pull it up like that. If you get one that's, that's not loose enough, it's really tight, then you want to use your mechanical advantage and go with the other side. So let's say there's a nail here, you would go right there and just go like that. Because you're using what we call the moment arm. So the more distance you have away from the fulcrum point here, the more force you have. So that's all you gotta remember. So we're gonna come in on this one. This one looks already like it's already a little bit loose. So there's really not much to do there. And all I do is I go right down the line every six inches or so to each one of the nails. Give it a quick shot. And he's already up and he's in one piece. You know, the, I didn't leave any splitters anywhere. And we're just gonna go down the row here to the next one. Keeping it nice and clean. And on occasion, you might have one that breaks on you a little bit. Uh, there was some rotting here, or sometimes it'll shatter around the nail, but that's fine because for the most part, you can see here, this guy came up pretty much intact. And you, you always find all the stories of people's lives under these things. You could see where there was a leak before, where there wasn't. Here, the wood rotted a little bit. The nail's right there. 
And then uh, afterwards, as you go down the line, you can come back and you'll see all the nails that are still there. And you just go in there and take them out. And you can see on the concrete, see how it leaves like a little crater there? So you want to sweep all of that up. And we always vacuum thoroughly when we're done, too. Because uh, you're going to be putting down probably a wood floor or something under this. So we usually, when we're done with this, we take the baseboard off. And then we vacuum under there real good before we put down our underlayment and our wood floor. Or if you're going to tile as well. All right? So, what happens if they glue it down? Some installers glue these down. So what do you do then? Well, you can still probably break that seal of the glue. And that's also where we're using my other tool here. Come in here, my little final one here. So let's say there was glue underneath this guy. Well, see how he's wide? And he just goes right under it, and, and if there was any glue there, you would get rid of that, okay? So, this is how you do it the correct way. So if you notice when I showed you my tools before here, what didn't I show you? I didn't show you this, the flathead screwdriver. Why? Because you shouldn't be using it. Unfortunately, a lot of our weekend warrior friends, this is all they have. They don't have one of these. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't own one of these, get yourself one of these, okay? Because this is not the correct way to do this. There's two reasons why. Number one, if you're using a screwdriver, the only place you're going to be able to get into is in the middle in between two, two nails. There's a lovely thunder again. So, with the screwdriver, if you were to come in here like this, well, what are you going to do? All, all I can do is do this. Oh, look at that. I just broke the thing. So, this is why this is the incorrect uh, method. This is not the proper tool to use for this. Also, if you look at the head of the, the screwdriver here, he's really tiny and narrow, and all he's going to do is shear right through the wood. Whereas this guy here is nice and wide, and he will not shear through the wood. You just tap in, and he lifts up. Go to the next one. Tap in. Lift up. And the idea, like I said, is to just keep it in one piece, and then you can bust them all up later when you're putting them in the into the trash. Now, I'm not wearing gloves right now, because I'm just uh, showing you how to do this, but I always wear gloves when I do this, just because of the little nails on here, and when I'm breaking them afterwards. So it's a really good idea to have gloves on. And if you if you have a lot of old bad dirt or mold or anything in the, under here, you might want to have a mask on or maybe even eyewear. You know, it all depends on, on how sensitive you are to that sort of thing. So you can see how quick we can go right down the line. We can probably have this whole room done in 20 minutes. We're good. But if you're using the wrong tool like this, you're going to be at it for quite some time. Um, other tools that you don't want to use are like a, the butter knives, the, you know those uh, the, you know the little paint back buttery knives and stuff. They're too thin. Anything that's not thick and rigid like this, you don't want to be using in this. The idea is you want to use overpowering forces to to overcome the force of the nail that's holding this thing down. Okay, now I wanted to show you a situation here you might run into. So let's, this nail here, let's say I'm going to pry this up and the nail head just breaks off and you're just left with a post under there. So let's just say for argument's sake that this head broke off. What would you do? How would you get that out? There's two things that we do. We'll continue to pound it down with a hammer. <clears throat> that doesn't always work. So in those rare situations where that doesn't help, we'll come in with an angle grinder, my little $30 angle grinder, and just go takes one second. You just plug it in, turn it on, touch it to it, and you're done. And that's how we get rid of that situation. Okay, so I wanted to give you another example here. Of, uh, this is bad example number two of another tool not to use. So this is a taping knife, and I've seen people try to do this with a one-inch knife. This is a, I think a, this is a four-inch knife. And the reason why this isn't going to work is you can stick it in there in between two of these things, but look, see, it just bends too much, and you can tell that the, the wood is going to try to break. It wants to break, but you're not getting any upward force here because this metal is too thin. It's just, it's just bending. So all of the force that you're wasting your energy on right now is going into bending that and not lifting this up. I, could, I would have better luck with a 5 one but it's just going to break it, see? So... 
That's why we say we always use this tool. Goes in like that. Goes in like that. Goes in like that. And the whole thing comes up in one piece. And we got lucky with this one, all of the nails came up with this one. This is a rare occurrence. It's like the holy grail of carpet tack strips. Okay, so now that we've got the you know, tack strips up, I always come in with the, the, the flat edge of the, the demo bar here, and I always scrape along the wall here to find where my nails are. Like, oh, there's one. Because you'll, you'll make such a little mess down here that you always, you won't always see the nails. They're not that obvious. So I found one here, and I just get it up like that. So pretty much, this is really the only tool I need. This and the hammer. We have our gloves on, and we're ready to go ahead and deal with the trash here. What I usually do is I just break them in half like that, and maybe again in thirds. Makes it more manageable. And then it goes right into the trash here. And I always use contractor bags. And these are much thicker uh, bags. I never, ever, ever use garbage bags. So you always want to make sure you use contractor bags. And you always want to make sure it says three mil. So when I buy these things, I look at the box here. And you can see it says right there, three mil. Because if you're not getting three mil, you're not getting contractor bags. They're scamming you. I've seen other bags before that say like one and a half mil or 1.75 mil. Those aren't contractor bags, they're trash bags, and they're gonna be useless. These are nice and thick, and even once in a while, we'll still have a problem with one of these, too. So this is the thickest bag you, you can get at your big box stores. So these are the ones to use. So anyway, that's our video for today. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, look down below at the bottom of the video and click on the thumbs up, give us a thumbs up. And you can also subscribe to our channel by clicking on the round icon that you see in the middle of the screen there. And then on either side, you'll see these videos that are uh, related to this that you might want to take a look at. And with that, we'll see you next week and have a great day.